Hi family, what's up here? Yeah, what's good? And so yeah, we are going on excursion. The excursion is part of the whole world in Serbia program. And so after studies and everything, before we go to the dorm, we are supposed to go for like some data sketching. Ours was delayed because of um, COVID, but by the grace of God, things are back to place and we are ready to travel. So as you can see, our bus is ready. We'll be moving soon. So I just want to tell you guys to stay with me because I'm going to give you every single update on this trip. Thank you. Okay guys, so um, we are getting ready for the excursion and we are doing check-in. Okay. So ah. Because of that, I told that this is one of the most wealthy areas uh, in the meaning of uh, agriculture here in Serbia. Uh, so in the first place is a veal, corn and uh, sunflower oil. So here we have the production of the corn and we make a bread from the corn. It's very popular here. It's um, our brand, it's our tradition. I uh, suppose that you had the opportunity to taste it during the... Uh, we eat it a lot, uh, especially... Uh, um, in the morning uh, or in the evening with the dough. Uh, then uh, we have uh, two fabrics with the sunflower oil and the wheel. The wheel was during the Austro-Hungarian Empire during 16th century here, uh, very expensive and they paid it with the gold. And we will, uh, because of that, a lot of families here were very, very uh, wealthy. And one of the families, Brankovic, was uh, one of the most wealthy and most important families. And we will speak about it when we go into, uh, come into the monastery Kroshedo, uh, because uh, they are the, the not the owners, but they pay the completely reconstruction of the monastery. And we will. Uh, speak more about uh, the family and uh, the rest of the history 
during the period of Austro-Hungaria here in that hill. Here is up to the level of the sea, it's just 586 meters, so in some uh, meaning in some, uh, for example, books or guides, you can find it as a mountain and in some other as a mountain. Um, we call it the holy mountain of Serbia because uh, we have 17 uh, active monasteries there. Um, one is uh, destroyed during the Ottoman Empire, uh, completely destroyed, and 16 others uh, are functioning uh, as today uh, as open monasteries. So, uh, it was a very important place because uh, here in Kruska Gora we have two reasons uh, because uh, it's important. The first one are the monasteries where the monk has the obligation to rewrite the historical books. So, our history survives thanks to those monasteries. Uh, because, for example, when um, the library of St. Karlovsky and Belgrade during the, the first day of the first world war in the year 6 April 1941 was completely destroyed. Uh, everything survived uh, thanks to those books. Uh, now we have 18,000 uh, historical books uh, rewrite by the hand from monasteries from Krushka Gora. And uh, Krushedo is uh, one of the examples. We will uh, now climb to the mountain and we will uh, visit it. Uh, it's uh, our first stop. And please just to be all uh, together when we uh, hear first the story about it and then you can have enough time to uh, take the photos over everything uh, you want. And the second reason is uh, that this is now declared a national park from 1975. Uh, during the period of Festival Plate, it was declared a national park because uh, this was a camping area. Uh, all our royal families or rich families during the Austro-Hungarian Empire come here for camping. And uh, animal parts disappeared, especially deer, and because of that, it was. Um, now it's a strongly forbidden to uh, go to camping there and we have 50,000 of um, curative plants and we make uh, one special uh, drink, we call it Bermet, it's very interesting to mention that this drink was served in menu of Titanic boat. Um, this is a special receipt from Sremski Karlovci and uh, just now eight families are doing the production of um, Bermet. Um, it's uh, exported to the USA from the year 1925 uh, till today. Um, we have 16 curative plants inside and the red, strong red wine. So uh, it's a sweet one with the dry fruits inside. Uh, and we have um, uh, good grapes here, especially uh, the white wine production because of the Danube River. Um, Danube is uh, just uh, 12 kilometers from Trenski Karlovci. We will see it. We will be on the um, near the Danube River, and we have like a double sea, for uh, double sun. For example, the sun from the sky and the reflection from the Danube River make uh, the grapes uh, the high quality. So, especially um, two types. Uh, uh, especially two types of wine are good here, Temianica, and uh, one uh, we have Probus. Probus is the most famous wine here because Marco Aurelius Probus was the Roman emperor which was born here near the Danube River because Danube was the border of the uh, Roman Empire here. And we have a Danube River floating from Ser uh, in Serbia, 511 kilometers. Uh, here is the Danube narrowest uh, and the deepest. The nicest part of the Danube River is especially here in Serbia, making a border with Croatia and uh, going to Belgrade and then making border with Romania. All this was a Roman Empire. Roman, uh, 18 Roman emperors were born in territory of Serbia today. <laughs>
put it in the bus. Uh, what do you need? Of course, um, you can uh, take with yourself. Please, without photos inside the monastery because uh, it damaged the icons. Uh, we, we will go together inside the monastery and we will hear the story about it, I will tell you, and then we will have enough time for or the souvenirs or uh, the free time. Okay, so when we take pictures inside, we damage the icons and so... Yeah, just inside it's perfect. Yeah. Okay. And... I'm not taking you from Gara. Okay, so she said we cannot take pictures inside the monastery because it damages the icons and so it is not allowed. And so I thought it was here, but I think this place they said we can take pictures. But it is when we enter an inside that we can't take pictures. I really don't know. You can see what's inside. Okay, so guys, this is the monastery. And so she said all the history inside the monastery and I'll be playing it for you guys too. Basically, this is it. But as she said earlier, we can take um, pictures inside the monastery. So we're doing it. We just, I'm just going to take you around the monastery. So you have a look at it. They said that the reflection actually spoils there. This is, this is the outside. Someone asked if the place is still in Jews and she said yes, so Sunday is mostly the people from the village, they come around and offer prayers. I think you'll have a better view, please. Let's move on. I want to see that written words there. 2004. All right. Let's zoom back. Oh, God. Yeah. You don't know you can come in work. You don't know if you can come in work. Now we 
in the monastery Crucedo. It was found in 16th century. Yeah, the Crucedo is just the name of the village we have passed, and Crucedo is the name of the monastery. Our monasteries always have uh, the name or of the village or the river behind, and this one has the name of the village. Uh, in 16th century, here was not Serbia, here was Austro-Hungarian monarchy. And they have a big war with uh, Ottoman Empire, because uh, Ottoman Empire was from uh, Turkey, from Constantinople, still win. All this area, half Europe, was Ottoman Empire, so Turkey. And uh, here was a big war between Ottoman Empire and Austro-Hungaria. And Serbia held a lot of uh, Austro-Hungarian part, and because of that, they uh, repaired the monastery Crucedo in 18th century. And here we can uh, see two types of icons, of frescoes, better saying. One is uh, Byzantine style on two pillars here on the left and the right side. On the pillar on the right side you can see a typical Byzantine style. This is a man of the gray, with a gray face, uh, with the clothes um, as a poor man, uh, and the Byzantine blue. Blue color of the walls represents hope, because blue color in all Byzantia represented hope. And Byzantia was one of the uh, biggest Orthodox um, the biggest Orthodox countries in that period. And here on the left and on the right side, on this uh, half circle, this is a place for the whore, and uh, this we can see uh, the frescoes from 18th century, from the period of Maria Theresia. Maria Theresia have given, the princess Maria Theresia have given the order to uh, repair the monastery, to say thank you to Serbia, because Serbia helped uh, in um, the big battle with the Ottoman Empire. And we can see the difference. For example, from 18th century, this is a Baroque style. And in a Baroque style, we can see, for example, the first of all, color. Color is completely different. It's not. Uh, Lapis Lazula. This is original Lapis Lazula on the wall. Lapis Lazula is one um, a Prussian stone and uh, from this Prussian stone we make a uh, color, this blue one, and uh, it was very expensive. It was paid with the gold. One kilo of gold is one kilo of Lapis Lazula uh, color and we imported uh, from Afghanistan this color. It was really, really um, uh, hard to import and to pay it, of course. And uh, here we can see the difference. First, the, the Lapis Lazula is not original from 18th century. The second one, the face the faces have the expression here uh, in a Baroque style. We, you can see some expression of the face, eyes, nose, uh, everything. And uh, in a Byzantine style, all the faces are the same. In a Byzantine style, the face is in a gray color and as the skin. And uh, in a Baroque style, we have the color of the skin as a normal color uh, we have now. For example, uh, the clothes, everything is colorful. Everything is uh, completely different. And the clothes is uh, as a, like in a rich man, for example in a Byzantine style. So this is uh, two completely different styles and just two centuries of difference. So 16th and 18th century. Uh, what is the new? Uh, the newest part in every monastery is altar part. This is the altar part and all the icons of, from the altar part are the donation of um, Orthodox Church of Russia and the Patriarch of Russia when he came for the first time here in the Monastery Crucedo he gave uh, this central part of the icons always the uh, in our altar place uh, it's strongly forbidden then the woman enter just the man the priest who is uh, having the liturgy enter inside and the woman not even in the monasteries uh, which are the mo ladies monasteries the lady don't enter inside the altar just uh, outside and the priest from the village come and uh, can uh, have the liturgy and uh, the difference for example between um, uh, christian orthodox we are now in a christian orthodox church and the uh, catholic one is that in the catholic churches you have a seats you can sit down and we stay in a church and the ladies stay on the left side and the men on the right side normally it was like that uh, now uh, we mix but in ancient period it was like that even uh, today in the ceremonies of baptize of uh, um, uh, big liturgy 
between, uh, for example, Christmas or something like that, ladies on the left and men uh, on the right side. And uh, here we have frescoes and icons. Uh, icons are on the wood and frescoes on um, the wall. Why we call it fresco? Because uh, we made it on the fresh wall. And here also we have the rest of two um, members of the family Brankovic on the rest of the right side. We have the rest of uh, Saint Mother Angelina. Uh, she helps a lot of uh, women, for example, women who cannot uh, have a child or uh, have uh, some um, problem with the... Uh, um, especially uh, from the woman's health. This is uh, Saint Mother Angelina and uh, we come here and uh, say some prayers and a petition and uh, then we give to the monastery or, um, or money or uh, for example wine or something you know for, uh, to say thank you. Uh, one of our king also is burned here in a monastery Crochedo because uh, he was a big teacher of this monastery. This is a king Milan here on the right, uh, your right side, on my right side also, you can see the thumb of our King Milan. Why he is so important here? Because uh, he was um, a brother of liberator of Serbia from Ottoman Empire, Prince Mihailo. And Prince Mihailo, uh, you know the pedestrian area that has the name of uh, Prince Mihailo Street, and uh, he is um, on the horse <coughs> showing the hand uh, to Istanbul, and he liberates Serbia from Ottoman Empire after five centuries. We were under Ottoman Empire during five centuries, and because of that, we have a lot of Turkish words in our dictionary. Uh, we have um, a food very similar to the Turkish one, music, and um, it's, uh, 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 you heard uh, some of uh, some of you have heard some music, our music in the, the bus, and the, um, the melody of this music is really similar to the Turkish one, and because of that uh, it's uh, one of the testimony that we were 500 years under the Ottoman <laughs> One is the Byzantine style, um, and the proof of that is Greek Confort, or the Greek Cross. For example, the first, uh, the, when we enter, the entrance, the altar, and two places for the four make a cross. When we see it from, um, from the bird's perspective, it's the cross. And this is called Triconfos, or the Greek Cross. This is a typical Byzantine style of construction, and from the Ottomans, we, uh, it's uh, the dam. Uh, always in the main dam, in the central one, is the highest, and this is the most holy place in all the monastery, because here, for example, when you, have, when you want to make uh, some uh, prayer or something, you stay here, because uh, uh, we imagine that here we have the connection between the God and us, and always uh, on the main dam is Jesus Christ, Pantocrator, Pantocrator, it means uh, he is watching on us. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have uh, some question for me or something you want to know? <coughs> uh, the monastery, yeah? Uh, we don't For example, is um, uh, we, uh, we have um, less more the same prayer, the same things in our liturgy. The, uh, I have a little space here. I was there in the old churches, and it's exactly the same. Um, uh, we believe in uh, one God, in one Jesus Christ, which is the, um, the Son of the God, and in Maria, which is the Mother of the God. So she is the Virgin Maria, we call it Virgin Maria, and the Catholic is also. Juan Papa is the main priest in Rome, and uh, Orthodox countries have a different patriarch. For example, we have our own Serbian patriarch, Greece has a Greek patriarch, and every Orthodox country has its own patriarch. We don't have one uh, And in the church, the difference is that in the Catholic church, we don't have a dance because we didn't have uh, those in the Ottoman Empire and we don't 
have a trick on hot. It's just uh, we don't have a place for the core because always the core is upstairs. And they have a music in the churches. We have an instrument. We don't have instrument because we have an instrument just made from the dark. And the only instrument made from the dark is our voice. Uh, and in um, Catholic churches, we can uh, sit down and liturgy is about our hour and a half. And in our churches, liturgy is uh, it's about uh, 45 minutes, all the ceremonies, and we are standing. We have a uh, new pregnant woman, something like that. Uh, and monasteries maintain itself uh, from selling the products, for example, candles. Uh, another difference uh, between uh, Catholic and uh, Orthodox uh, is that we put a candle for a person. For example, I put a candle for mom, for dad, for my son, you know, for health, for prosperity. Uh, and in uh, Catholic churches, we put a candle for a saint, saint George, saint Mary, you know that the sand don't help us. So we left the same, but uh, with a, a small difference. And our candles are yellow, and their candles are white. Uh, monasteries maintain themselves by um, making the products. For example, all the products in the monasteries are um, original from here. The main product is brand new. You know that, our, uh, that we are very famous for wine and brandy production. And uh, the brandy from the monastery is the brandy from uh, sherry and oak. And uh, these, uh, they are selling it, they are selling honey. Also, this area is very famous by making a honey product, uh, books, um, the historical books, the writing by the hand, or everything uh, of uh, this thing we can find it in the monastery. And here, especially, in the, uh, as I have mentioned to you, that in Vojvodina it's a really um, a fertile ground. The monastery has its own ground, and all the priests are working in the ground and sell the product from the ground. So uh, these are also incomes from the mo for the monastery. Uh, and we have just one share for the main priest or the patriarch or the bishop, depends. For example, if, if, if the bishop comes to uh, hear the liturgy, the bishop is sitting there. This is this chair in our left side. And because of that, we have a uh, big chair from the paradise, you know. But this is a place where uh, be, uh, there is a uh, when we have a liturgy. When we have a liturgy, a main priest is here, and the main priest is entering into the altar place and have the Bible, the candle, the wine, and bread.
come to the church and yeah, make no, here. No. Uh, now yeah. people is coming in on Sunday, for example, on Sunday they have this big uh, praying for all the village and the people is coming here and the pray. It's about 45 minutes as I have mentioned to you, standing and uh, then they put the candle and they can come back. Because Sunday was uh, the day when uh, we don't uh, do any work or feel the Sunday from the yard and uh, everything, but here inside not because the flesh is damaging the, uh, the fresco. Okay, in about uh, 10 minutes in the bus, okay? Okay, in 10 minutes, I give you 10 minutes to, uh, to take photos of our art. Yeah? No, this is the outer place. We cannot enter into the outer place, just the priest when they have liturgy. Inside the outer place is the Bible, wine, bread. Yes. And, and they open just this door, and from this central door, central part, they enter in the semi. Uh, what about this? Uh, this is the Yeah. 